what's happening everybody this is robert the leather cowboy muhammad with another video uh we're from premier leather crafters down here in the dirty dirty and it's kind of raining kind of not raining kind of raining kind of not raining it then got back cold again so you know i don't know what's up but if you like me i take this opportunity and time to work on my craft doing leather work so here we go. I don't know if you guys remember this piece or not, but this is my first very own Sheridan design uh, that came out of this tater up here. Uh, the very first one that actually I felt good about doing. Um, and it's now that I look back on it again, I still see some errors and flaws in this. Um, but this was a piece that encouraged me that I can really do this, but I'm just going to sample this and I'll probably wind up just giving this to my nephew or something. You know, he just wind up getting, um, his driver's permit. So, you know, now he think he's all the big boss hog, you know, cause he have a little ID with his picture on. So I said, well, okay. This was just laying around the shop, and the more I looked at it and kept looking at it and kept looking at it, I was like, I really need to do something with this. Uh, so, what I decided to do, I went ahead and put a couple of coats. That's why you see that little sheen on top of it. I went ahead and put, uh, put my few coats of super sheen on top of it. And actually, I thought that it would be a great piece. And I know what you guys are thinking. This guy hasn't finished the last video about the inlaid crocodile bracelet. Let me tell you something. Yes, I'm going to finish that video. I am going to finish that video, and there's going to be some corrections to that video as well. Because um, I put out, not misinformation, but I put out the wrong weight and the uh the base of the bracelet and after i kept looking at it and looking at it and looking at it my mind works in so many different ways because i have so many projects going on and i'm trying to get these videos out here for you guys to where you can can at least work on your craft or further hone your craft or learn something new or completely different that you might not have never heard before or might not have never seen before but the only thing that I did put out different in that video that I had to go back and revise. That's why if you guys have saw the latest channel, uh, the, the library on my channel, I took those videos down. And it's only because the only thing that we're going to change up in that video is the weight of the, the ounce weight of the base piece, which I took a eight to nine ounce. We're going to change that uh, on the inlay. I'm going to change that on the inlay and it both going to, because it was so much that was stacking and building on top of that, it made the bracelet to me, it made the cuff to me really too heavy and too bulky. So to cut that down, I'm going to use a two ounce on both the front and the back. So that was the ideal weight because the crocodile skin itself or the crocodile leather itself, the embossed crocodile leather that I used, if you guys hold up, I'll show you. This is probably about, if you can see that thickness, this is probably about a inch. I mean, not a, a one ounce to a 1.5 by itself. So that made it feel like when you put, um, a one ounce surface, then you use in a one one and a half ounce surface, then a one and a half ounce uh, uh, skin or hide in between that. Then you're using the cutout piece, and you're using the tape, and you're using an eight to nine ounce base side or backside interior part. That made that thing total out to be about a little bit over eleven, almost eleven ounces. Actually, it was more than 11 ounces. And that's a pretty thick cuff. 
And you don't want your customers to have that thick of a cuff to where it feels like a weight is on their arm. So, the one I'm going to change about that, and then I'm going to still go back. So, if you guys still remember where we were on those videos, still want you to use the same exact cutout. All everything else is still the exact same except the weight of that first piece that we laid down and glued everything on top of. That's going to be a 1.5. But today, boys and girls, I have been dying to do this. I have been dying to use it. Um, I spent the money, actually bought some more sizes. Uh, if you guys can hold up just a second, I'll show you some more uh, product that we that I spent just to let you know that I have every intention on doing this particular now this is four here that's five there and this was the first one this is the granddaddy this the bait this the daddy of them the very first one that I ordered then I went back and ordered this one. And then while I was at it, these are the ones that finally came in on the Wish app. So, and as you guys can see, as you guys can see, it is one ounce is one ounce, no matter how you cut it. Now, this is also one ounce here, and you can tell the difference. This is more round, that's more flat, but it's still one ounce. And this one here is... Uh, 50 cc's, which I'm going to say is about maybe two, two ounces. So two of these or two of these, maybe three or four. I want to say that's about four ounces. But either, anywho, the what I love about this one is um, it comes, well, no, check that. These come with tips this way. And these are all different sizes. And uh, these will go on to here. And we'll use with this one. So they're all different sizes. And they go anywhere. The, of course, the larger the number, the smaller the tip or the smaller the, the needle point is. So if, if you want to use like a two or three, it's really going to come, uh, it's going to come out. Because the smaller the number, the larger the hole. So you guys just remember that. But I really want to use these. So just wanted to show you guys that I'm not telling you to do anything that I'm not doing myself. But since this one was the first one and I've already crimped my tip like I, I really wanted to come out and flow. And if you remember from that video when we talked about the game changer. You don't want it to run. You just want it to, you know, you want it to come out when you squeeze a little bit. And what I'm using here is dark brown. And um, I'm really, 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 really excited because I want to use this in this test piece. And I say it's a test piece, even though I'm going to give it to my nephew as a gift. No, not really as a gift. I'm just going to give it to him so he can have his little, you know, make him feel a little bit more manly about himself. You know, he, he cares. A long wallet and so this is really not something that I would want to be out there as a showpiece for anybody because as you can tell you know uh, inside the leaf I did a little different um, you'll tell on, on a new piece that I do uh, but a lot of the scrolls are not really rounded and shaped like they're supposed to be and even the outside scrolls are not really rounded in shape like I want them. So a uh, few of them are. A few of them did take it. And then this is just something that I really wanted to see how it was going to tool out on the leather. So, and like my, my, my leather teacher always says, you know, because I, I, I'll draw something on paper. And, and I'm real super excited about it. And I'll tell her, hey, what you think about this? What you think about this? And she'll say, put it on leather. She always tell me to put it on leather. So, and, and probably here in the near future here, right before I get ready to go on the book tour, um, I'll pro I will do a Sheridan video on how I go through and draw, do my Sheridan design. Now, this was done probably about, I have to go back and scroll back through Facebook to find out when I actually drew this. But I think it was about two months ago. 
So you guys can see I've come a long way. Uh, if I can grab my drawing book real quick, I'll show you guys exactly how far along we are. I'll show you guys exactly how far along I am. And so you'll know that you can see the difference between, uh, can you guys see that? World of difference between that and that. You can see a world of difference. Um, and this is just one of the pieces. Uh, let me show you again another one. And you would have to, to get better at Sheridan or drawing the Sheridan design. And this is one that that's going to lead into another video. And I'm really getting away from what I want to do today's video on. But just to show you guys, you have to draw every day. You see how it just keeps getting better. This is going to be on a gun sling that I'm doing for a, 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 new, a new customer. But you can see the difference. Even looking at the flowers, you can see that it gets better. It gets better. It gets better. And that's the same thing that I would tell you guys when I get ready to start doing this. And this is from a new client that found me on Google. She wanted a cigarette case. And you can pretty much see how it just keeps... It, it, it will get better, boys and girls. It'll get better, I promise you. And But the only thing you have to do is keep at it. Keep at it, keep at it, keep at it. So now, what I want to do today is, I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to use the Game Changer in a new way of dyeing um, the backgrounding work in your Sheridan piece. And this is what my art teacher, she, showed, she shared this tip into one of the on the one of the leather gills and uh leather groups and and i when i saw her working it i immediately jumped on and said i'm sold so now you guys are actually going to see me do this right here on this piece right here so let me angle the video camera okay I think that'll get her done. And I want you guys to see just exactly how. Now, this is all of the backgrounding work here. And this is all of the interior part. We're going to do the interior part and work our way out. And all, of, all along this area here, we're going to, I'm going to use. Now, this is dark brown that I'm using. Even in the inside of the bud here. Um... Now, I'm not going to use it out here because I want to do this a different color just to see how it contrasts together. Because now I've already super sheened this part in the exterior part of the wallet because I want it to stay that light color. So I want to see how this is going to contrast together. So here we go on the test piece. And that's running a little bit, but I think I can control it. And this is the thing that you want to practice when you're getting ready to crimp that is how much comes out you have to control the flow now the reason one why i love this idea is because it's way better usually i would hand paint this or i would just antique it and then i would let the antique gel um the antique dye go all over the entire piece and then I'll take some paper towels and wipe it off. But what I love about this is this needle never gets onto the antique part. So even if you're using a lesser grade of leather, it doesn't turn the part that you've already super sheen even a tan. Now to give you an example of that, um, and I don't have um, a pair of shoes uh, I thought I had a pair of sandals that I did to where it um, the an the antique was it, it even went through the super sheen. Now the only way to combat that I know of, and that was I was in a hurry, so that was my fault on why it did that because I tried to quick quick dry 
the super sheen. I was already on a deadline and I let my deadline got away from me and I tried to quick dry it. And future reference on that is don't put a hair dryer on super sheen. When and and I should have known that from the advice and the video that I gave you guys about super sheening. When we was talking about the um when we was talking about how to get that two-tone color in another previous video, and you have to apply your super sheen three times and let it dry one day, one full 24 hours. For each coat, I tried to quick dry it. Then I quickly found out that that didn't work. So, in this particular business, when you're having a deadline, yes, this is going to work out beautiful. In this particular business, when you have a deadline, and that's one thing that you guys have to keep in mind, give yourself enough time to where. When, especially when you're asking for a deposit from your customers or your clients. When you're asking for a deposit, give yourself an extra three days just in case something like that happened because now you can go back and super sheen the correct way and that, that will give you one day for each coat on super sheen you have to one coat one day two coats the second day third coat the third day then you're ready to use your antique uh, to uh, put on there and it should take very well but quick note do not use a hair dryer thinking that's going to speed the process up you can't rush this craft Man, this is turning out pretty good. And what I really love about this is, is it's staying inside strictly just on my background and work. And it's not running over. And that's the great part about your knife. When you're doing your knife work, your knife, your swivel knife has already cut the, the um, I don't know what the proper word, your ch a channel there. So when you do your, when you're doing your swivel knife around your scrolls, and I followed that up with a steep beveler, uh, a steep uh, background beveler. So it gives it that, it's pushing that part down. So my die is only running up to my scroll and it's not running over my scroll as would if this was done with a paintbrush. You don't have to worry about your paintbrush getting all over your scrolling work. Because the die is only going to go, it's only it's going to stop at that channel. You guys can see that. The only thing that would throw this off is if you squeeze too hard by trying to be in a rush, and it will squirt. And that's what you don't want it to do is squirt. You just want to put a little bit of pressure just to get it to come out of the end of the needle. And I still can yet crimp this just a little bit more to uh, not to get it to run out so much. But for the sake of the video, and I'm not going to painstakingly let you guys watch all of this or listen to me ramble on and talk. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pause this video and then I'll come back in a second when all of it's done and you guys can see what it's going to look like. Okay, everybody, and we're back. And I know I said that I was not going to dye that part, but it just didn't look right with it not being dyed. And it kind of made the it look wopsided or lopsided a little bit. So let me turn it around and let you sh see what it's really going to look like. And what's going to happen next is I'm going to come back and buff this real good to give it a little soft subtle glow uh, or gloss shine a little bit and this is where we'll st I'll start getting ready to start shaping this a little bit 
So, and you can see why I like using the, the hemp uh, bottle because it really gets around where you need it to get to, especially in the inside of this scroll right here. Uh, let me find a pen or a pencil uh, right here inside of the scroll just that little small section right there if i had to use the paintbrush on that let me show you kind of show you what that uh because i would have had to use the needle point paintbrush now and you probably can but when you get to painting that inside of there like that you really just gonna have to really stand that brush up and really get the paint down in between the background and part or where your tool uh, matted that down. So with the needle, it kind of just went where it needed to be. So there we have it. Um, and I think I'm I'm not I'm definitely not going to dye anything else because it has a, a, a coat of satin sheen around the edges as well as on the interior part. So the only thing left to do now is to go ahead and finish cutting that out. Punch my holes for the snap is going to be on both sides to where it'll hold together, and hand stitch my in uh, my 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 wax thread, which I think the wax thread is going to look very good against that dark brown, and you guys can pretty much see how that's going to yeah, you see that that. That tan wax thread against that dark brown is really going to make it pop. It's really going to make it pop. I think it's going to turn out very, very well. And, and as well as, as it stitches along the interior or the uh, inside of that stitch line there. I think it's going to make it contrast really good. And even if I wanted to use a darker thread uh, here from this point to this point, so it will match the tan here. I can go with a dark brown thread there if I wanted to use two different colored threads. Just something to experiment and play around with so it can all pull together. But I think now, um, as I'm looking at this, I have a great starting point for the future projects. And you guys can already see, I already have another one that's cut out. So after I get through drawing, that Sheridan design uh, for this piece, uh, I think that that's going to look very good on there um, for for a new customer. Actually, it's one of my clients from Lakota uh, Ranch up in Virginia. This is his wallet here. So uh, I think the Sheridan is going to do. Now it's not going to be this one here. This was my experimental piece just to see how my Sheridan uh, work would look on leather. And now I know what I need to fix and where I need to go and my decorative cuts and all of that stuff. So with that being said, I'm going to let you guys get out of here. Uh, let me fix this again so you guys can focus back on me. But um, with that being said, I think that I have a great starting point and I know what I need to do, what I need to fix, what I don't need to, to put background. But um I think my nephew will get a kick out of it just so he so he can carry his his little now he, he only has one ID his permit that's it not even a library card you know everything is on Google now so people don't go to libraries but he's gonna have this big old long wallet just to carry his permit so I think he's gonna get a kick out of that hey this is Robert the Leather Cowboy Muhammad right here from Mill Leather Crafts it's down here in the dirty dirty of Alabama with another hot video uh, using the hemp bottles to do background and work. I'll see you guys on the next one, on the other side. Peace.